All right. It's a DWM day. DWM block specifically. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do here. We're going to obviously try the basic way that everyone gets DWM blocks working as just its own independent modular status bar. I think what I want to do with this is take the C code from DWM blocks and then transport it basically inside of DWM. I know this bloats up DWM in quite a bit, but I really like the idea of just having one binary for everything. There's not, hey, install this, install that. It's just, hey, install the one binary and bam, we're going. So uh, that, that's the idea behind this. I think we can get it there. I think it's going to be pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. A uh, bit busy too. We've got a couple brand new stuff going on. We have uh, <laughs> this weekend, I decided I hate platforms of all just every kind of platform <laughs> whether it's social media whether it's something you go by or whatever it is i had a newsletter and then uh the place i was hosting the newsletter with wanted to charge me like 500 dollars a month to send out a newsletter and i was like no that no that's just ridiculous because i was used to do it for free but it kind of the, that let newsletter got up to like 15,000 subscribers so it's not exactly small so I decided, hey, I, I set up an entire independent v, uh, VPS, uh, put a, a piece of software called Cindy on it, and then interfaced with Amazon SES, which is an enterprise, like a simple email service is basically what it stands for. Anyways, cool cool deal there is now I pay $1.20 every time I send the email. I'm super happy with that. <laughs> so I did that uh, on Saturday, and then on Sunday I was like, hey, uh, the membership site I had, I really didn't like. So I said, screw that. I'm going to dump that platform too. And I moved on to just my own thing. Everything's coded by me now. <laughs> ah, excuse me. And I was just like, ah, let's move on. And I moved to Shopify, you know, as the payment gateway, basically. And then I just was like, I'm just going to code everything on the front end. And I did that too. And I was like, all right. So now I'm not beholden to pretty much any platform unless, you know, Shopify a little bit and then obviously Amazon AWS. But honestly, those are endpoints. What I was doing was paying middlemen and that just paying middlemen just feels bad. <laughs> and you always pay a premium. They do make things easier. But uh, in this in my case, I was like, nah, let's let's just do that. So I switched everything over. So if you dealt with any of those things, just know everything changed this weekend and i sent out a couple emails but if you hadn't got those i just want to fill everybody in yes thanks for the tier one i am early today so i actually uh, have been getting stuff done i have been extremely productive and uh man it's, it's great i even had my teleprompter back so i can read chat a little bit better uh i, I initially took out the teleprompter because i was like ah yeah i don't know if i want that there it's a little bloated and then nah. Yeah, I was like, nah, it's not so bad. So I added that back. Uh, the status script is what we're gonna actually tackle today, really. You see where this uh, DWM is here at the top? Well, we're gonna make all that beautiful and like click on stuff today using DWM blocks. Uh, I'm just kind of spitball on how I wanna integrate DWM blocks. And it's kind of funny, like a lot of people get scared of DWM, but DWM is like the foundation for so many great window managers, like awesome window managers built on it. Uh, X monads built on it. Uh, there's so many people that took DWM and then basically added to it or uh, translated it into a different language. Uh, I think with X monad, I think they translated it to Haskell, which that's a, that's a choice going from C to Haskell, you know, that's wild. Anyways, <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Uh, oh, man. Good to hear in it. First first job in IT. It's always getting the first job in IT is always the hardest part. And then after you get the experience, it, it just all down the hill from there. You'll just get inundated with recruiters and everything. And then it becomes more of a chore. <laughs> Have you tried or thought about trying Linux from scratch? Maybe. I mean, it's it, it depends. The problem I have with like Linux from scratch, hell, even like Gen 2 and some of the more, uh, or probably another one that a lot of people love is uh, Slackware. That's also a good one. Uh, but the, the thing I have with those types of distro spins is there's a lot of work involved with them. 
because a lot of them don't have well actually gentoo just added a, like a legit package manager which is hilarious because they've always been known for just compiling everything eh, except for like emerge and some other things but i digress the problem with those is it's just a ton of work and if i'm actually using the system i want to be able to use it and not spend hours troubleshooting something silly or or just installing a program i want it to make my life easier and you just don't run Gentoo or Exmo or, or not Exmo now, but uh, you know Slackware or Linux from scratch, and then just have a seamless experience. You need to spend like a month setting that stuff up, and then once you get it set up, it's probably good. But I, I just I don't I don't know I don't want to put in the time to really go go that deep. Uh, maybe sometime in the future I will, but I've been saying that for two or three years. I think at this point, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> Hyperland is awesome. Yeah, v Vaxry's amazing, an amazing dev. He he actually just I, I think I caught like a Brody video about it, about him doing uh, a replacement for X Cursor, which is great. I look forward to trying Hyperland uh, sometime soon. Uh, it's just I really want Input Leap to get there, uh, which you know is really something I high, r highly rely on for for my workflow. That's why I'm still using DWM. And honestly, if it works, I don't care if it's old. It's more of, does it work? And that's it. Yeah, and, and this system right here, I am not going to change. <laughs> for a while. For a while, guys. I, I am now known for reinstalling Linux every two weeks. As entertaining as that stream is, I'm like, all right. No more. No more of that. For for a little bit. I need I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> now that I actually have it all set up with my pass through, I'm kind of like, ah, I'm good. I'm good for a bit. Uh, I will try different distros in a VM for sure. Like that's totally doable. Like when it comes to different distros in a, a VM, I totally will, uh, will do that <laughs> for a while. Two weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. That is me. That is me. Lovro for sure. Like, no, no, this is my forever. Uh, I, I'm going to say at least a month, though. <laughs> we'll see. You look like an old man. I am an old man. <laughs> got got my, my Miralax, and my Insure in there, you know, just, just waiting on my Depends to show up. <laughs> Chris won't change OS for a while. We've all heard that before. It's true. Uh, a long time is a month in my world. True. Ah, uh, something new shiny will come about and I'm like, Ooh, I want to try that. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But I think a lot of times we'll be more in, in that. So by the way, how's the health journey going, Chris? Uh, really well, really well. I just ran a mile and it's been a while since I've done a sub eight mile. So I ran a mile and this is not exactly impressive but seven minutes and 29 seconds. And that was uh, preparing for Murph coming up. So if you're unfamiliar with Murph, it's a, a one mile run, a hundred pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and then one more mile run. Uh, last year's time on Murph was 58 minutes. This year's time, I think I can break sub 40. So that, that would be pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty solid with everything and the only hang up i have right now is is making sure i get proper pro proper fuel proper nutrition the day of uh, when that comes out it'll be may i think when we we attempt it memorial day of course and yeah that that should be fun and i i don't think i'm going to do it with a vest i do have a, a weighted vest over here that uh, would definitely make it difficult. If I do the weighted vest, I definitely won't break sub 40, but I, I might not do the vest. And if I don't, then I'll probably just do uh, sub 40. We'll see how it goes. But as far as the health journey goes, yeah, I'm in the best shape of my life. Like right now, I'm sure, pretty sure I could kick my 20 year old self's ass. <laughs> For fairly easy, man. I mean, my lifts have gotten considerably heavier. Uh, I'm deadlifting well in the 300s now, uh, bench press well in the 200s. Like, yeah, man, it's like I, I have really, really uh, uh, gone further than I thought was possible, which is great. 
And I'm just going to keep on that. That's always been my primary focus pretty much this past year and a half. And it's been amazing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with uh, the progress and I'm just going to keep at it. Staying healthy is super important. And, it, it, you know, you just got to pick something that you actually enjoy. It's something you can do consistently. <laughs> you did a four minute mile in your 20s. Yeah, uh, I was not that in shape in my 20s. I will say uh, I didn't actually start working out until I was like 23. So it wasn't until like probably that, that lower middle 20s before I even started working out. And the only reason I did that was back then was I, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, track the ladies. <laughs> and I was like, well, if I get a six pack, there you go. You don't have to be like a wordsmith. And uh, yeah, that works, by the way. If, if you're 20 and you're like, I, I can't find a girlfriend, go get a six pack. Go, go hit the gym. You get a six pack, bam, it just happens. It, it's really that simple. <laughs> but that was my main thing because I wasn't very good. I'm still, still not. I'm awkward as hell. And I'm in my 40s now. Yeah, I can do a mile in less than an hour. Yeah, I, I was never really good. I think my best, my PR for a mile was uh, probably around six minutes, 15, because I did run a lot in my 20s. I just didn't lift very much. And I was pretty, uh, pretty thin, pretty lean. And I was, I, I think I could do a 5k in about 20 minutes. So I was a bit more of a runner back then. But anyways, yeah, there's the health update for everybody. Let's, uh, let's clone some DWM blocks and get into it, shall we guys? I think uh, this this should be a pretty easy stream. Let's uh, go into GitHub. Right now we have DWM Titus. I feel like what we could do is just do, do we want to do a sub module here for the clone? Or do we want to just, nah, I kind of want to do its own thing just to launch it, try it out. And then if I like the DWM setup we get or the DWM block setup we get, then I think we go ahead and tie in DWM blocks into DWM. So let's just do a git clone <coughs> and grab DWM blocks. Is there a delay on stream? I don't think, uh, I think I have pretty much everything set to a low latency. Sometimes Twitch messes up on the stream and you start seeing kind of a, a delay. You have to refresh the page and then that seems to fix it. Uh, I did, I hadn't switched out the switch yet. Uh, we had problems last one so if we do have any cutouts on this stream uh i did buy the uh switch ag the, the, the basically 10 sfp switch aggregate uh from ubiquity and that that i had i just haven't installed it it's just sitting over there in a box but i did update the firmware and router os for switch os or or the uh, uh what is this the microtech it's like a cheap cheap switch and uh it's good We'll see how that goes. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Now, I want to say we just copy blocks def to blocks dot h, bim blocks dot h, and this is what it would do. It, it spit out a memory and the date. It looks like. The, let's just build it first and just see if it builds and displays properly. So. I'm gonna just go sudo make uh, defined but not used in DWM blocks. That's fine. Uh, sudo make install, and then if we go DWM blocks, there we go. So DWM blocks does launch and it does do everything. It put our status up there in our memory, and now I think we could download some scripts and sub modules. So everything we've done so far on DWM, adding like status CMD and uh, a lot of the capabilities to add clickability to the status bar, it's already there. So a lot of the legwork for DWM blocks is already done. So we'll close that out, clear. Um, I think you can just do, I wanna see if it actually clears this out. Titus DWM, what was it, X set root and what was it was it title name and then let's just go titus dwm yeah okay yeah it does <clears throat> i'm trying to think i think now we grab some scripts and just kind of see what we have let's look up some dwm 
or DWM block scripts. I was also looking at some of like the DWM patches because I'm all the way back here on 6.3 and like fix memory leak. We might actually patch some of the DWM that uh, I, I was just looking at the different commits from their Git because everything's public, which is nice. So if I see a commit that the DWM team makes, I can just snag it which I'd be like, oh, I'll just change those lines or add that. Like there's a memory leak thing I saw in there. I was like, yeah, I definitely need to add or patch that in as well. So let's see, DWM blocks scripts. Oh yeah, yeah, we definitely will add a cheat sheet. And I kind of want to add like something you just click on on the title bar or press like F1 to do it. Uh, let's see, Luke Smith, man. Oh, Luke, is he still around? Has anybody even heard from Luke in a while? Oh, it looks like he updated it five months ago. Okay. Oh, uh, he's using dot files, p kill, DWM blocks, clickable modules. All right, sweet. I like it. Lars, thanks for the tier one. It is going very well, good sir. I am enjoying the day. I've, I've gotten through all like the admin work of what I do and it feels good to be like free. It's been a while since I've been caught up on almost everything. I don't have any sponsors. I don't have anything. It's just, I can come out here, turn the stream on and then just not worry about anything else. Just let all the life stress melt away because there's nothing else to worry about right now, at least. <laughs> uh, Let's see, what, what did Luke do here? All right, we got uh, CMD, signal, and fork. Uh, I think we've already done this, so I don't think we need to do any of that. What's he doing for his config? So he's pulling these, which like SB clock, SB internet. Huh. Let's see where those are. He's pulling these from somewhere though. Like if you look at his config, he's pulling SB task, SB pack, packages news but he i think he uses news boat he commented out all his crypto stuff <laughs> i mean yeah he's probably he, you know i think he got really big into crypto like specifically monero and stuff which i know they kind of bagged on monero uh i think he got banned in a lot of places just because of his being so too private anywho uh torrent not a big torrent guy um Doppler, forecast, don't care about weather, mailbox, volume, something I definitely want. So where are those scripts? I bet you he put them somewhere else. Let's go back to his main repo. Let's see if we can't find these scripts somewhere. Yeah, maybe put them in DWM. Uh, vanity gaps. Ugh. I never understood the vanity gaps. I don't know. I feel like making a poll for everybody in chat and be like, do y'all use vanity gaps? I don't know. Anywho. Yeah, let's see, LARBs maybe? I know that was his install, but, huh. I guess we could search his repo. Huh, okay. Let's search inside, status bar. So it's under void rice is where he put it and he put it all in here. Okay, I I interesting. Can we, let's just grab what we need here. We're gonna grab his volume probably. What's he using for volume? WPCTL. I don't know if I even have WPCTL. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. I don't think I've ever used it. So let's see. We're going to just grab this script. We'll copy that. Uh, actually, let's just grab the raw file. And let's make a directory. Call it scripts. And we're just going to grab it and do a wget. So we have SB volume. What else does he have? Just a little bit of gaps hurt nobody. <laughs> Maybe I need to try gaps. To me, it's just like wasted real estate. That's why I'm like, I don't know. Let's grab clocks. Oh, that's interesting. He's displaying the clock with the, the hand icon. And it's just date and then, huh. Well, that's an interesting way of doing it. We might modify that. Well, let's grab clocks. What else do we have? Disk, I don't really want to know about my disk or any of that. Internet, again, no. Memory, um, I have 64 gigs of memory. I really don't care about memory or music or news. 
what does everybody like in their 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 status bar for me it's just like volume and clocks I'm trying to think if there's anything else maybe package updates so like pack packages possibly and i don't i'm a, i'm kind of a minimalist though yeah i'm not big on weather updates i can just look outside if i i, I just can go touch grass if i care about the weather app indicator icons okay so like pac-man packages would probably be good displays number of upgradable packages for like a pac-man sy i think that that has some benefit especially since we're on arch we kind of need to know hey how how far out of date are we i think those would be good so now let's go back into his we got packages clock volume i feel like that's a good uh really solid version so he does a recording thing let's go here we're gonna grab pack packages and let's come back vim config or uh, what was it blocks dot h all right let's paste this and let's delete these so we'll start with packages and then work our way in the next up would be volume so for volume, he's doing SIG. I think the SIG update signal is going to be 10. All right. On to the next. And then finally the clock. It's just updates once a minute. Pretty minimal. Um, okay. That looks good. Uh, as far as running these, I want to kind of keep them in the config directory just in case I do keep this as an independent project. <laughs> You're not a minimalist. You have a status bar. True. True. I love me some arch. There's something about it. <clears throat> hmm. I see while how he's referencing those. So probably like a dot local would be sufficient. Uh, let's just go. Let's copy star. And we're going to put this in... Probably our home dot local bin. And, I mean, honestly, we could link it, but I kind of want to just let's just see if it works. So we have that. Let's come back to here. Let's just do a make. Uh, we do need to look at that. I don't like the fact it's just saying, hey, return status is defined and not used. Uh, we needed to clean up. And DWM blocks is not like super active development either. So probably need to clean it up a little. I don't like even warnings on those. Anyways, so now we have that. And if we just go DWM blocks, we now have volume. So if we click on volume, does not appear to have a click. Uh, the icon, I kind of like that. And the date, 24 March, that Tuesday. That all looks good. I think it could look better though. Now, as far as making this look solid, what? What can we do? The delimiter he's using is spacebar. Let's take a look at ours. Uh, blocks.h. Uh, our delimiter is a pipe symbol. So let's take that out and unsign delimiter length. I don't even think he has that variable. Let's delete that. All right. Ah, okay. It needs that. Hmm, let's undo that. Instead of the length, I think we just replace that with like a three. Let's make that. Now let's see what the delineation looks like. Okay. Hmm. Thoughts on Capuchin? I, I like it, it's fine. I'm more of a Nord guy myself when it comes to theming though. So I kind of stick to Nord. Glaze W event uh, M window manager Phoenix. Uh, I, I haven't even looked at it, so I'll probably check it out at some point in time. A lot of window managers for Windows. I just have a hard time taking it seriously. Like when I'm in Windows, I just, I don't know. It, it always feels like it's just tacked on top of it. And I, I think it's because Linux has spoiled me. <laughs> like Linux has completely spoiled me to window managers and Windows. Because Windows Managers and Windows are just simply something on top of the existing window management that's being done. So it can never really be done 
properly. It always will feel meh. You know, that's just kind of my thought when it comes to window managers. Uh, I like the idea of them in Windows. It's just implementation is almost impossible. It's like an almost impossible task because of how Windows works. Oh, okay. If you liked it a lot better than Karmambi, uh, Glaze, WMM, I mean, I'm going to still try them. I won't write them off completely. So maybe maybe uh, I'll try that next time we're in Windows sometime. Um, hmm. How do we make this look better? Uh, this this looks fine. What's he doing with DWM blocks, maybe? I almost want to just take his entire DWM blocks because it looks like he's actually updating it. Where the other DWM blocks does not look like the official one right here. Looks like it hasn't been updated. Uh, he had the delimiter there. Yeah, the last update was three years ago. Luke's one's updated was five months ago. Replace signal handers with signal FD plus pool. Although I don't know what else he did in his DWM. So I'm kind of like hesitant to use it. Hmm. So to update his volume command, he just adds it to his volume shortcuts. That makes sense. Kind of want to get rid of the day maybe. I don't know. I think the date format, I think I might change that real fast. For the date format... That would be under clock, it seems like. All right. Totally uh, botched that, didn't I? All right. Here we have this. Sending that. Just doing a date. E. Hmm. That's what happens on block button. Although I don't see anything actually being launched when I click uh, any of the buttons, actually. Nope. Okay. Hmm. Mantis, thanks for the tier one. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think very many people use this much anymore, but it's interesting. Now, cow curse. I don't think I've ever used that before. Let's see what that. What is that? Cow curse. Text based personal organizer. Okay, so he's using a text based personal organizer. That must be something different. Has anybody used cow curse before? Let's install it. Discover a new program. Ah, I mean, that's kind of cool. It's like a, okay. What are, is there notes? Let's tab. So you just tab between the windows. Let's say you have a to do and I'm going to add DWM blocks. Uh, we'll put that as a highest priority. Okay. So it just like goes ahead and numbers it. So besides DWM blocks, DDM and blocks configs, we'll make that like Four. Oh, so what happens if you DWM blocks config two and we'll make up four two. Okay. So then it puts it after it has all of uh Vim bindings. So then let's say you're done. How do you kill an item export previous window? Sorry, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked, but that's just what I do. Other commands, ah, delete view flag edit note oh and then you can add test note uh view note would be kind of closes on its own interesting do you want to delete yes this item has a note attached to it delete to do or just note ah okay so you don't want to do the to do i mean i kind of like it the to do tasks through cli it's simple so now if we come up here does that work? I think my 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 sig uh my clicks aren't working. Okay. Hmm. All right, well let's just go ahead and change the clocks to what we want. I was just interested in actually seeing it. Um let's go What am I going to grab? Did I not edit in them? I thought I did. Anywho. Clock. Guess I didn't save it out after that it uh, let's change this around. I think what we'll do is we have the year. Hmm. I know this is going to seem like blasphemy to many, but I don't kind of want to do it this method. Day is fine. B is not okay. And date help. And hmm. I think for the formatting, we'll start with... 
a very a much more simplistic format. So I'm going to start with the month abbreviated month name is dash B full month name is a low, uppercase B. I kind of want to just grab the number of the month. So like, uh, there's the day of the month, full date. I think we'll just go with a percent M percent M dash delete and come on over here and get rid of this. Then we have the day and then we'll just go with the year. I know, I know it's just kind of, I wanted to make it a little more succinct though, make it clean. So for that, let's see the year, where is the year? Do we have it? Okay. Just uh, uppercase Y. So we'll go percent Y. And then when we relaunch DWM blocks, I broke it. Invalid date. Oh, it doesn't like the hyphens. Already broke it, just changing the date. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know me. That's okay. A slight detour here. Now, I think what we'll do. Now, I don't remember. No, the spaces will count. Let's launch DWM blocks again. No, it didn't like it. Ow. Okay. Date. So M is the month. Percent M. Then we have percent D, which is the day. Day of the month. Yep. And then we have percent Y, which is the year. Huh. How odd. Why would that break it? The following options flags may follow. Hyphen, do not pad field, pluses and zeros. Just yank it. Invalidate. So what's invalid about? It? Let's get rid of this. Invalidate. Was it the Y? Add a plus before the. Okay, let's come back. Someone said add a plus before this. Uh, how odd. That was a. That was kind of a strange one. I must have wiped out the plus here. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, I did want to fix some of the formatting here. And then DWM blocks. All right, cool. <clears throat> I like that. It gives me exactly what I need. The exact date, the time. All right. Now, I think what we got to do is somehow fix our, our clickability of this thing. I want to like click something and then get a response. Like if you do cow, I want it to spit out like cow with a terminal or something. So let's go Vim. Let's just cancel that Vim and SB clock. So right now we have block button, notify send, which notify send. Okay. That's fine. Set SID. That's fine as well. Do, did we set terminal? Ah, terminal is not set. Although if you do notify send one and you click it, it should pop up all of this. So let's take this, yank it, and I'm just going to put it over here and we should get something like this. So the block button does not seem to be working. Hmm. Actually it might be working, but the program's not running. So now we click it. Yeah. Still no. Nah. A, a good thought. Yeah, shell checks a pretty good LSP for a lot of bash stuff. Lately, I've been using cursor like crazy, which is just amazing. I have so much fun with it. So if this isn't working, why wouldn't that work? Replace sig handler with sig FD plus pool. Let's look at this commit that he did. So he added the sig FD header and pull. Sig handler. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think some things changed and I'm going to just clone his DWM blocks. Let's dump ours in the trash. See if our base DWM is good enough or not. I did update a lot. That would suck if it didn't. Um, DWM blocks. Let's do a git clone. Let's just grab all of those blocks. Let's go to config.h. Okie dokie. SB task, pack manager. Let's get rid of news. Get rid of that. Torrent. 
Yeah, we can leave that. Moon phase. Oh my gosh, you're just tossing crap up there now. Uh, we might come back for like some of that. Mailbox. Let's see what else we have. Battery. Not on a laptop. SB internet. Nah. Help us. So we have clock, volume, Pac-Man, packages, recording icon. Uh, we don't need that either. Oh, that's cool. He does it. So he added a little auto command to recompile DWM blocks every time this file is edited. That's neat. It's a good idea. Okay. SB task fan. Um, um. Yeah, so my DWM doesn't have whatever modifications he's made with the patches. So anytime I click into the blocks, it's not actually registering the clicks. That sucks beyond all belief. So that means <laughs> we've got to patch it. Oh, no. That's not good. So these are the patches I think he applied to... Let's see. Oh, these are just applied to DWM blocks. Dot C, which is fine. DWM blocks. Yeah, that's both those are fine. It's just my status CMD is not working properly, I don't think, to register my clicks. Hmm. Why'd you remove XDG open in browser hotkey? I think blue, I was, I was just going through versions and then it got wiped out when I grabbed another version. There was a, uh, when I was doing a poll, for some odd reason there was a conflict. So I was like, whatever, I can always add that XDG open back in. Whenever I get it back, uh, obviously before I made it like public, like I say, hey, hey noobs, use this. Or, or new people to DWM. Uh, I would definitely add XDG opens everywhere, specifically like the terminal and then uh, browser and uh, file explorer. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if Luke's still alive or not. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's just doing something different now. I mean, Wayland's pretty good right now, although I will say I kind of got burned this last iteration of Wayland when I installed KDE 6. It was not a great experience. It was incredibly buggy uh, from a graphical standpoint lots of flickering display capture issues uh, man it was it was not good uh, so i think the next iteration of wayland we try will be hyperland uh, but i kind of want to try hyperland after messing around with some of these status bars i'm kind of like hmm i mean this does work and it is a decent iteration it's just not very sexy but it works good uh i don't want to mess with the signaling changes and the clickable thing i'm kind of like ah all right this was the status cmd we have a sig handler and the status cmd is defined as such so i think i probably have to change that sig handler in if i did this if using status 2D, use these patches instead of the ones above. I, I didn't, I, so I did that. Status monitor patches. Well, distribution doesn't really matter on building stuff. You just build it. Like, it doesn't matter if you're using Linux from scratch. Well, Gentoo, Debian, Arch. You just build it. Like, you, if you, you can build anything in either one. I can use DWM and... Debian and I can use an arch. It, it really doesn't matter. It's just the libraries or it might might change a little bit in the versioning. So yeah, I don't really care about the distribution. I'm just trying to think of where I want to what I want to do from here on the status bar. Hmm. My idea originally was just to kind of make it slick, all one binary, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, is it even worth doing that? I don't think it is. Well, screw it. Let's try Hyperland. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. Let's go for it. Let's let's see what does Hyperland look like these days. I I, I still have my project. Let's uh let's let's go. Like I can't believe you, Titus. I just can't believe you. Fast forward. What do we have? Green, 
backup. What was I using for Git packages? Waybar. Is Waybar still a thing? I really hate Waybar. That's right. Now that I'm thinking about it, it was the bar in Hyperland that was the problem. Ah. What's Baxtree recommend? Has he ever said anything about it? Because I was going back and forth. I really didn't like Waybar's implementation on Hyperland last time I tried it. This was almost a year ago now. So it's probably gotten a lot better. But I just remember it kind of sucked. And I was like, I'm going to try something else. And then I tried a Rust. I think I actually settled on a Rust-based project for building it before moving. Hmm. I guess we can try Waybar. Uh, have you ever heard of... Polybar sucks. I will never use Polybar. I'm sorry, but that that one, I just... No, nah, it's super resource intensive. And a lot of the way, it's just... It's a terrible project. At least when I used it in my iteration of it, I really, really didn't like poly, Polybar. And Polybar is, I think, X, X, uh, Xorg anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But that was just my impressions. Um, other people swear by Polybar, so, you know, different strokes for different folks. But for me, I hate Polybar. I will never use Polybar. Hmm. Yeah, because the, the CPU usage in Polybar for me was so out of control and I wasn't even using that many scripts. I didn't, I think I was using just like volume, date and time. You know, I'm not exactly loading up my status bar with a bunch of gar garbage. And it was like 10% or 5%. It was more than Windows. Let's just say that much for a stupid status bar. <coughs> All right. Yeah, I think at one point in time, I used to like Polybar, but yeah, that love was definitely lost after I saw the performance problems that I was having. Again, people will have different mileage, but for me, I'm like, eh. All right, let's just look at HyperMWM. What is the repos he has in here? I'm kind of hoping Vaxtry kind of did his own thing here. So you got Hyper and Hyperland, which is fine. Hyperlock. Hyper cursor, hyper paper, which is a wallpaper utility. Okay. Hyper picker, which is a color picker. Hyper lang, library and hyper config language. Okay. That's probably like, a, I wonder if that kind of implementation, if that does like LSP and stuff. I uh, might look into that. I don't know what that is. Hyperland plugins, hyper, dude, this thing, dude, he has gone out of control with the repos. Looks like my repository. <laughs> XDG Desktop Portal Hyperland. Hyperland Welcome and Hyperland Protocols. Okay. Interesting. So let's go Hyper WM. We're going to go Hyperland. Right now his release is 37.1. Let's see what we have over here. Hyperland. It's in there now. We got Hyperland. It's version 35 not 37 um okay does waybar work i kind of want to just try the basic stuff here for hyperland we're gonna go yay s grab hyperland all right hyperland and then grab the xdg desktop portal for hyperland and let's see what else do we want to grab hyper dock Automatic docking tool for Hyperland. Hyper keys, keybind retrieval utility. Okay. Man, this has really gone out. An uh, opinionated panel shell for Hyperland compositor. A uh, docking tool, okay. Hyperland workspaces, a multi monitor where. Hyper shot. I think I was using, uh, right now I'm using Flame Shot, which doesn't work on Wayland. So we'll have to switch out our screenshot tool as well. Uh, the shell, I use Bash and Kitty for my terminal, which will be fine. Dude, AUR Hyperland is really, really expanded. Now, Grim Blast, I was using, which is for screenshots. Probably grab that. NWG Displays. GTK based dock. So we got a bunch of different docks here. I'm kind of curious of this NWG dock 
Let's take a look at that as well. NWG doc hyperland. What's this look like? I'm kind of curious. Application from the NWG shell project, configurable with command line doc written in Go, aimed exclusively at Hyperland Wayland compositor. It features pin buttons, client buttons, and the launcher button. The latter starts default NWG drawer. Ugh, gross. Not a ton of commits. Not a ton of activity either. All right, I think we go Waybar. I think we need to give Waybar another shot. I just wanted to look at that. So for Waybar, yeah, there's a lot more. Yeah, this has expanded a considerable amount. Now that Hyperland is so much more popular, last time, like, you go back a year, Sway was still, like, the number one window manager, which I think Hyperland has overtaken Sway, if I'm not mistaken. So what I'll probably do is Hyperland, XDG, Desktop Portal, Waybar, and... Probably like WL Roots. I don't know if I need that. There was a Wayland Tools repo. Gen 2 Wiki is usually pretty solid, actually. Flashbang. Sorry. Let's see what we got for for that. Simple Claim Compositor. Sway Wayfire. DWL Hyperland. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about functionality? Kind of want to just see... I can't remember exactly. Okay, so WL Clipboard is what's needed. Dunst. Maco, probably. I would probably just use Dunst. Desktop notifications, it's fine. Flashbang. All right, I'm gonna blind everybody. <laughs> so we got Waybar uh, for status bars. We already have Dunst. Thermal emulation, we use Kitty. Wallpaper manager. I actually want to use Hyper, Hyper Paper whatever that is, and then Hyperlock for that. We'll build those independently. WLR Randar is definitely needed. WL Randar, okay. What else do we have? Screenshots and recording. Grim, uh, Grimshot probably needed. We can get that later though. Remote access. <sighs> Let's go. Blinded by the light. Wrapped up like a douche in the middle of the night. All right, here we go. WL Randar. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we're going to leave all the dependencies. Grab a ninja and messing. Mason. Now we're going to do Hyperlance. <laughs> we're going to give it a whirl. Uh, oh, before we do this, let's just do an update real fast. Oh, wow. Ray, you are kind of got bloated there, didn't it? What the hell? Whatever. Let's just go. What's the worst that could happen? Unlock. I think I can get rid of Midori, though. Probably will get rid of that. We'll just do an upgrade live on stream. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, you know, I probably should have done a backup before doing all this. That's okay. like to live dangerously. What's the worst that could happen? I don't need to knock on wood on that. Let's do it live. Uh, time, time to break Arch. Go back to Debian. Let's do an update. Oh man. Yeah, I remember. You guys remember like everyone switching to Paru from EA and Arch. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, ah, oh, yeah, he's unmaintained." And then like you just look at the EA repository, and it's got like commits every day. And I was like, no, I think uh, it was a distro tube that said like, yeah, he's unmaintained, but like it's maintained. It was just wrong. You know, us YouTubers sometimes get it wrong. And man, I, I remember people jumping in chat and going, I use Paru. It's rust. It's better than yay. And I'm like, oh my God, doesn't really matter. Yay's written in Go. Paru's written in rust. They're both maintained. You do you, but they're they're both perfectly fine, <laughs> unless something has changed in the last couple months. Yo art, oh yeah, now that that was uh, depreciated or deprecated, I should say. Somebody will watch this after the fact and comment, be like, ah, oh, 
you always mix up the terminology and say it wrong. I'm like, dude, I don't really care. <laughs> I just want to have fun. Mess around. That's what we're here to do. Stop being so pedantic. I had one of those comments yesterday, and I said that to the guy. I know he's kind of trolling, and you shouldn't feed the trolls, but I just couldn't. I couldn't resist. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to go back to DWM. DWM just works. That's the beauty of it. It's just not not that sexy. That's the problem with DWM. It's old, but it works really well, like incredibly well. And you can code anything into it. It works for everything I need. But, eh, let's try Hyperland. It, it yeah, new shiny thing. Let's try it out. It can't be worse than Plasma 6. <laughs> oh, shots fired. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Plasma team. Plasma, you know, KDE is still my favorite desktop environment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Famous last words. Anytime you say it can't be worse, it always can get worse. Uh, true story. That is a true story. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. When did I install this? Was it two weeks ago? Probably should have done a backup. I worked really hard getting this thing going. I'm just doing a blind upgrade. Never a smart idea. Uh, anywho, it'll be fine. Probably. Most likely. <laughs> do, do the backup right now. <laughs> Uh, what's everybody using for time shift these days? Or was it? I was using time shift forever. Time shift's always been my favorite backup tool. Uh, but there's like back in time. There's a couple other ones out there for the Linux realm. Arch wiped out my home folder. Oh, everybody has those. Oh man, everybody has those uh stories with any Arch based distro. It can go south pretty pretty quick. It's always great until that happens. Clonezilla for an image. You can't beat that. That's true. I was thinking something a little more automated, though. So I think we'll probably do time shift. Let's give it a whirl. Pika backup. Okay. I usually just... I don't even bother backing up my home folder. It's in its own separate partition. So all I really care about is uh, the root and the boot it's the home folder it's like whatever i don't really have anything in there that i really care about will your stream schedule be back to normal i don't know if it'll ever go back to normal but it does seem like tuesday thursdays are usually the best uh i have really enjoyed streaming like after taking a month off and then coming back i was like man i really do love streaming but it's, a lot of it is, hey, do I have a project to stream? I'm not just going to stream to stream. Like, be like, okay, it's Tuesday at noon. I'm going to stream now. Nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just do streams when I'm like, okay, I have this project I'm working on and I really want to make some progress on it. Then I'm going to stream it. But if there's like nothing I have, I'm going to be like, eh. Well, I've actually been taking a break altogether from games. I actually probably should make a video about it. This is this is a YouTube. Here you go. Here's a YouTube title. I quit gaming for 30 days. And I pretty much have. Like I haven't loaded up any game in the past 30 days. And I just had so much going on that I'm like, I have to get caught up. Now that I'm finally caught up, I could probably probably game. But yeah, for a while there, I was like, I just have too much going on. I have to catch up. And I was just stopped gaming altogether just so I could make sure I get everything brought back up to normal. I'm becoming a normie. You've changed. <laughs> oh, that's so great. I love it. I, I could read the comments now on YouTube. You're not too far off, man. You're not too far off. But I, I've really enjoyed a lot of the projects. That's the thing. You got to kind of do what you enjoy. And if you're not enjoying gaming or you can't find that particular game, maybe you should just 
take a, take a break and then just start doing a lot of projects and things that you enjoy. And if you're enjoying doing that, then heck, it's like playing a game. This right here, compiling and loading Arch up, man, it's so great. Why is Midori taking forever? Oh my lord, what in the world? Like, remind me to remove this after this is done, because this is kind of one. It's taking a long time. Something's up here. No, it's using all 32 cores. Okay. It's like, why is this taking forever? We got a Xeon processor with 32 cores. I was like, why is this compile taking a long time? Dude, it is. It's cranking out some. Dang, that's a kind of a hot. Look at those thermals. 85C. 87C. Ah. Yikes. Okay. Well, we are pushing the limits here. It's a Midori browser, I believe. I think I might have installed that when we were doing the initial setup. So... I, it, I'm just going to go ahead and let it build. And then once it's done, I'll go ahead and do a removal of Midori. As I say, hey, thanks for the 100 bits. <laughs> the old Windows tool, man. Uh, yeah, we need to get back into probably doing some C Sharp programming. We've been doing some C programming in DWM lately. And I probably want to get back to the Win One Shot project. We finished all the back end on that. And now I want to actually try and build a GUI front end with C Sharp. See how hard that is. I bet it wouldn't be too bad. 100C is the new 50C. Uh, win one shot. So I, I, I built the toolbox for a PowerShell, right? And then I bundled up the executable. So people that donated, they could run the executable. And then it would basically wrap all of the PowerShell and run it from just saying run as admin. And then it would launch it for folks. And I was like, hey, that's a good way to, one, support development of the project and do it. The problem I kept having with the executable is anytime you wrap a PowerShell script in an EXE, Windows or any antivirus in Windows will flag it as a virus, especially if it's modifying the system like my toolbox does or my utility does. So I was like, damn it, how do I get around that? And then I looked and I was like, well... You could just build a C Sharp program with .NET and then not use PowerShell. And then you're not using it as a wrapper. And then I was like, but I don't want to reinvent the wheel and have two different code bases and two different tweaks that I have to keep up with. Because that would suck to maintain that. So I thought, okay, I'll ingest all the JSON files from the Windows utility directly into the C Sharp program. And then instead of doing those tweaks using uh PowerShell, it'll convert those tweaks and use its own functions in .NET and then run them in the back end. We actually did all this, so it's not like a theory I'm saying. We actually finished the project and ran it and it ingested all the JSON configuration or tweaks files and then just did all the tweaks right there through an executable using only .NET with no PowerShell. The cool thing about that is then I can actually take it offline bundle it up and then put like a GUI on it and then people could just take it from PC on like a thumb drive or I have had a lot of issues with people in India not able to reference GitHub. Apparently India, the, the government in all their fine wisdom decided to block GitHub, which what? Or at least raw GitHub files. So I'm having problems with that. To a lot of people that try to run my script out in India, it ends up failing because the, their government firewalled GitHub. So this would also fix that. So then people that would do it, eventually I could get there and I could have its own independent executable, but all the tweaks and everything would still be pulled from the PowerShell, the PowerShell uh, project using the JSONs from the PowerShell, but excluding all the PowerShell uh, script itself. Quite the undertaking, but it went really well. So all the back end works, all the really the big leg works pretty much done. Yeah, you could also use a VPN. I think a lot of people in India do use VPNs to get around it. Hey, we need to clear something up. I am not the lead dev in Bazite. I'm just a maintainer. Kyle is the lead dev. Oh, did I say you were the lead dev, Hikari? I just said you worked on Bazite, I thought. Yes, B big shout out to Kyle. Kyle is the lead dev of Bazite. And I've been meaning to look at that project. I actually have a, a mini PC. And what Bazite is, is it's like Steam OS, 
but actually minimize. Like a lot of people have tried to do that. I think there's Wines app that tried to do it. There was the offshoot of it, uh, Halo OS and some other ones. But Bazite's the only one I think I've seen that I'm like, ooh, that looks interesting. So I do need to do a Bazite streams coming up. Maybe we do that next week. I think next week we'll do it. So that would be fun. But, but yeah, sorry, sorry, Akari, if I have if I said you're the lead dev because I, yeah, I think uh, I meant to say you're just a maintainer on there. But I, I knew you worked on the project. In Spain, you almost need a proxy to access Telegram. Oh, I could see that. Telegram has a ton of scams on it. So I could totally see that. Uh, how's the pass-through doing for me? Oh, man, the pass-through has just been great. Uh, right now, we're kind of taxing the system with this giant uh, uh, giant deal. I, I did run into a problem with, I think it was Twice Manager. I never was able to pass through my PCIe card. But I just said, I asked for it. I'll just pass through independent devices. So, but it it works great. So the pastor has been going, going off like gangbusters. Oh, wow. The whole OS is built through GitHub Actions. Damn. Okay. I need to take a look at that. GitHub Actions are crazy. I, I actually made a GitHub Action specifically for my project because I got inundated with issues. I was like, I need an auto close script. So I ended up... Uh, Grabbing one, I think Conti gave me a base for an auto close script, and then I, I had to fine tune it a little bit, and then I made a GitHub action to kind of go through. And if no comments were made on a specific issue, just auto close. I know some people are like, well, that means the issue is still kind of open. I'm like, yeah, but you can still always reference the closed issues. I just I didn't want it bloating up to hundreds of issues and issues I'll never get to. But I like having the issues there, so if I ever need to reference something, I can just type it in search and say, hey, are people having problems with this? And then it would pull up closed issues and open issues. Valve promised to release SteamOS 3, right? Well, I yes and no. I don't know if Valve will ever do a general release of SteamOS. That's why I'm kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> Valve and number three don't work together. Shots fired, Half Life. Um, well, I guess we got kind of like Half Life Alex, if you had that thousand dollar VR system. But yeah, I just don't see Valve releasing a general Steam OS to the public. It's just such a headache to keep up with. I mean, maybe, but man, that's a lot of issues that can come out of doing the general release. Maintaining a whole list Linux distros, it, Linux distro is difficult, especially with the variety of different hardware out there. And I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever see like the Steam boxes and that type of thing again. <laughs> I played Alex on my Quest 2. It was too scary. That's funny. Yeah, it's kind of odd. I don't know why building this. I, I'm guessing just Chromium so massive that it just takes forever to build. Because, I mean, we look. Uh, okay, it's calming down now. We're coming to the end of it. So I guess it's it's finishing up. Dude, all right. I don't know what I was thinking. Why the hell did I install the, the source version of Midori? Must have been smoking crack that day. Uh, do I alt anything on a Mac? Uh, you know, I used to do Mac for Final Cut Pro. And I, there's times where I miss Final Cut Pro compared to DaVinci Resolve. I still love Final Cut Pro and a lot of the templates and ease of use for specifically YouTubing. Dude, it's fast and I get why people do it. You can hack up a video super quick and if you have a whole bunch of uh, pre-done things, you can just drag them onto your timeline and just go to town, which is pretty awesome. Um, What the hell is going on? Did I just install like the whole Arch user repository or something and I didn't read right? Did I just pull a Linus and just say, do as I say? Oh, Lord. Why? Just let it go. We're almost to Z. Might as well just let it go. It's fine. It's totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah. Just pour water on it. It'll be fine. That's it. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> what the hell is going on? I don't know. Oh. What is this? Oh, Lord. This is what I get for using the AUR. It's what I get. I deserve this. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh what happens if i close it can i just all right <laughs> all right guys let's just uh let's just abort that midori is a chromium based browser a minimal chromium based browser i i, I guess i just grabbed the the wrong package because I just grabbed it from where you are. Rah. Hmm. I might have grabbed the wrong package here. So is it actually doing something, I wonder? It seems like it's doing something. But it's really not doing anything. Okay. Can we just remove Midori? Hmm. That's not good. Fuck, man. Dude, did I just break my whole system? Okay. It's fine. We hadn't we hadn't rebooted yet. <laughs> okay, okay, we're up to date. So we simply do SYU. Okay, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Uh to fix this. Shit. Uh to fix this, we install Paru. Mm, I like that idea. <laughs> hear the comments already oh my god all right uh yeah par you better than yay you know it's written in rust what, what more do you need to know we're just gonna uh, go go ahead and grab paru real fast i know you guys said not to but why not it'll be fine what's a couple more packages Ah, no, no. This, this is gonna work great. I'm just gonna change a few things, get it going. We use Paru to kind of clean things up a little bit. It's gonna be great. A little more fuel on the fire, sure. But I think this is gonna be an improvement. I do feel like Paru might be a little faster than Ye. As much as I talked Ye up earlier, that was before I tried to install the entire Chromium base with every single tool set in my Arch instance and didn't pay attention to what I had on my AUR. You know, Arch user things. Yeah. <laughs> Old Titus. Package, lower count, package counts better. Titus today. Let's just install everything. Let's just install the entire internet on here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yay is so 15, 45 minutes ago. Man, this stream is cursed. We started DW and I'm like, ah, you know what? Let's just install a whole new window manager. And then it went from that to let's upgrade our arch system. <laughs> it's, it's so funny how things spiral out of control so quickly. I feel like we were right there and then just kept taking hard lefts. Hmm. Do you think it's possible making mutable... Windows Server version, all the data stored externally on a NAS or a SAN. Ooh, maybe kind kind of. I don't know about mutable, so to speak. But what you could do is you could do like an iSCSI drive from a NAS, and then attach it. Windows actually has really good iSCSI control using the iSCSI initiator, and you could create a something in your NAS that way, connect to it, and then store all your data there it's doable in that regard, but Windows does like to change. It likes to update. It's not really ever immutable, so to speak. That's why people choose Linux for a lot of things. Honestly, Mac does a pretty good job, too, of locking things down from that perspective. But immutable in Windows, I don't know. I just, I don't ever see that becoming a thing. Uh... Oh, Hikari. Yeah, I cleared all that out when we had issues. I'll, I'll make you a mod again. All right. All right. Paru. What's the syntax for Paru? 
I think we can just do this. Paru dash R remove uh, Midori. Yeah. Just remove that. Um, let's do a Paru clean. Uh, okay. We'll just clean up a few things. I don't know about it removing C make there. I don't think I like that very much. Yeah, let's do Paru. Yay. Did not find yay. I think it was actually yay dash bin. Yeah. Uh, what about... Uh, what about... I'm trying to think of other ways we can kind of minimize this reboot. TLDR Paru. So we have upgraded that. Paru dash S U A. What do we have? GitHub, Thorium bin. That's fine. Yeah. When I think I might change the paru command instead of reviewing the updates each time. I feel like it should just push that through. Let's see. As far as general tips. Okay. Upgrade AUR packages. Print available AUR packages. QUA. Let's see what all we have installed with the... Uh, in the AUR. I'm kind of curious. And then I think I want to run an SU, SYU in Paru just to make sure we're good. But I want to first try and clear it out as much as possible. You can see it in Chris's eyes. He's afraid to reboot. Hell yeah, I'm afraid to reboot. We've been here before many times. <laughs> I regret my decisions. But here we are. Oh. I don't have reboot fear anymore after I went over to OS tree. I do think that the future of Linux really is immutable distros. Like for like general population type stuff, I still love obviously tinkering. But for most users, like I think of the Steam Deck. When I was using the Steam Deck almost on a daily basis, damn, you just it was such an amazing user experience. Immutable distros, I really do think, are the future for, like, mass adoption. If you can make a good immutable distro, I, I just don't see how you could compete. Like, Debian, Arch, all the stuff that people are like, oh, my God, my distro is the best. Really, if you're looking for mass adoption, it's none of those. It will be an immutable distro in the future because you'll never have to worry about dependency hell ever again you'll never have to worry about oh my gosh i broke something because i'm an idiot and i upgraded my system without checking patch notes and those types of things you know yeah i think there's something to be said for that okay paru dash q u a what do we have nothing all right paru dash s y u nothing why do we put paru here <laughs> gosh okay um, I think we started this whole stream with just trying to install or started this section of the stream with just installing Wayland's. What was that back in the day? Ah, oh, here it is. Let's just paru that. Yes. We're hyper landing. We're going to hyper land it. Watch out. Oh boy. What have I done? Oh man. Okay. Reboot time. Maybe. Here we go. Let's wait. Somebody say a prayer. <laughs> Phoenix is like, fail. Fail miserably. Oh, come on. Boot. Maybe. Oh fine takes a little bit there's a delay not having a screen that's normal yeah ha fine there we go i was not worried at all i don't know why you guys were thinking it was gonna fail totally totally exactly how i thought it would go all righty yay look at that everything's up to date we got that um hyperland it uh did we need to go to hyperland titus yeah all right let's set up cyber hyper right welcome to the hyper arch linux yay 
Hyperland installer. Okay. Yay was not located. Do you want to install Yay? Sure. Let's let's see how uh, how I do on my installer here. <laughs> I'm gonna get Paru and Yay both both going. Oh yeah yeah I don't do logins. Super secure here. Everything's auto. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, would you like to? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Oh, yes. Did I forget something there? Uh-oh. Probably should have looked at the script. It has been a little bit. Uh, no. 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 I feel like I missed something back here. What was it I missed? Uh, would you like to install the packages? Ah, okay. Well, let's just run it again. Couldn't hurt. Uh, I keep forgetting to do backups. I feel like... Oh. Alright, yeah. Dev Panda! Thanks for the tier 1, man. Seven months. Go plus plus. Here we go. We're making it... We're making it happen. Okay. I mean, we already have Yay. Oh. Okay. It says Yay is not located. I think we have problems with my script here. Uh, no. Alright, fine. Uh, let's just fix that. Well, we got, yay. How did I do this? Oh, I see what I did. Meh. Good enough. All right. Let's relaunch again. All right. This script will overwrite some configs and files. I don't even remember writing any of this. All right. Install the packages. Shoot. Ah. Mm hmm. Well, let's just install Yay anyways. We're just going to install all the our AUR helpers. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? I guess I could just alias Paru to Yay. I don't know. There's times I like Yay. There's times I like Paru. Doesn't hurt having both. All right, here we go. <clears throat> One more time. Let's see. It's probably like a whole bunch of Git contributions I just blindly took. Sway lock. Uh, we don't want sway lock anymore, though, because there's hyper lock. Eh, we don't need any of this. Let's just log out. Uh, all right, well, I don't know how to log out. We're just going to kill it. So this time, let's try hyperland. What? <laughs> Error. Config option decorate multiple screen edges does not exist line 51 in hyperland call okay so vim yeah dot config hyper hyperland cop and line 51 huh okay 51 take me to 51 multi sample edge is true okay cool uh how do we get the okay i always do like the hyperland that's cool. Uh, how do we get the workspaces for Hyperland? Uh-oh. Does my browser not work? Of course not. Oh, yeah, that works. I guess the hotkey didn't work. Uh, Waybar Hyperland workspaces. What's the... Is it still that same, like, crappy project? Let's see. There's got to be a better way. If you want to use the workspaces module, first copy the configuration files from XDG Waybar into config Waybar. Then go into Waybar config it, replace all references of Sway workspaces with Hyperland workspaces. That's pretty good. I will say Hyperland's documentation's gotten considerably better. Last time I tried it, it did not go well. So, having said that, I do miss it. Uh, Hyperland's animations are pretty sweet. Ooh. Okay. I like Meslo. Uh, LGS is the font of choice for my terminal and pretty much everything else. Love the nerd font. Nerd font, Meslo, LGS, mono for console work. So we just copy. We'll just go CP, ETC, XDG, Waybar star and we uh, copy that into the home folder dot config way bar and config perfect not a directory huh okay that's not a directory then it'll yeah sure we'll just erase that 
I don't know what it was. I'm sure, nothing important. Fig. And then it said, find sway. Uh, sway. Ah, okay. So then you got all the different sway workspaces modules. So you should just be able to do a substitute or replace. Nah, substitute. Uh, I will just substitute everything in this file. And we're just going to find sway work spaces. Oops, my bad. We got to escape out that forward slash workspaces. And we're going to just put in hyperland uh, escape out workspaces. Just do G. Bam. Hmm. Well, what did I do wrong with that? Substitute sway. Oh, hell with it. We'll just manually do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, there's it's, it's a super small file. So actually, this is hyperland. All right. Done and done. And then if we go way bar. Okay. Number one. Well, that's not working. What the hell? Sway mode. Scratch pad. Socket path empty. Media unexpected. Bar configured. Oh, what is happening? Let's get rid of module mode and scratch pad on Waybar, I guess. Oh, come on. Cancel. Sure. Let's just go sway bar. So mode and scratch pad, not, not working. Fine. Let's just kill it. Let's go way bar again. Okay. Media stopped unexpectedly. Is it endless? So probably something with way bars media function in those config file then. Too many open files fail to create secure directory. Pulse. So pulse and media errors we need to look at as well. Okay. It's fine. It kind of looks like meh. But that's okay. <clears throat> so under media, do we have media somewhere? We have custom media for modules left. Fine. Mm, let's go there. And then pulse was also an issue. What other pulse do we have? We have pulse audio there, pulse audio there. Now we are using pipe wire. I don't know if any of this has been updated in quite some time. So, I mean, we do have pulse audio dash. Ah, geez, I don't know. Let's let's just launch way bar again, look for errors. That's fine. But I think that pulse module for way bars garbage yeah I mean, it's functional huh yeah <laughs> good to hear pim you were right i started using linux because windows sucked <laughs> yeah you know windows aggravates me after a minute for a long time mainly just it, the thing about linux is you can definitely break linux pretty easily as i've shown multiple times but it's you who are the one that are breaking it. Like if you know how to do everything right, it's perfect. It's just learning to do the things right. The thing with Windows is you can know everything and then Microsoft will just push out a bad update and just completely screw you over or make like arbitrary decisions like throwing Copilot and other stuff directly into your taskbar. It's really Microsoft that's running off people because all, all people want at the end of the day is a system that works well. And it just depends on which system. That, that system can be different for many people. But uh, yeah, inevitably, Microsoft always ends up making me angry. Not as angry as this Pulse Audio issue that I'm having right now. <laughs> uh, all right, let's just get rid of the... Honestly, we don't need MPD, Pulse. Yeah, let's get rid of CPU. Well, let's leave CPU. Some people like that. That's fine. Uh, um... What was pulse anyways? Muted source, Havu control on click. I'll look at it different ones for that. So now if we go way bar, we shouldn't see any warnings or failures. We also don't have socket problems and I don't think we'll get any core dumps and we have everything just perfect. Uh, unable to receive desktop appearance error. We have a dbus error, unknown method, no such interface. 
open free desk portal settings on object path. So if we look at that, there is an XGG desktop portal for Wayland. I think last time I used this project, there was no such thing. So let's do a listing of that. Read, whoa, not org free death. What is that path? Org, what? Uh, yeah, there's a Hyperland specific portal right now for XDG. We installed it too. I think we need to reference it. Hmm. I feel like I messed up with uh, some of this, but that's okay. Next, I kind of want to look at Hyperland config. Let's look back through here. So we do have this XDG Hyperland portal execute once. And I want to look at and double check this. XDG and do we have a portal? Find XDG dash portal. It exists under hyper. What is that file? Okay. That is the XDG desktop portal. It's just a simple script to relaunch XDG. Let's make sure we have XDG desktop portal under user lib and XDG under uh, lib exec. So let's do ls and we do not unless it's hidden. Yeah, we don't have that. <clears throat> let's see if we can't find an XDG portal. No, nothing under USR. Crap, what do we do with that? Let's try which XDG portal. No XDG portal, desktop, hyperland. Do we have that? No. Have I installed GTK portal? I don't know. Yeah. So if we do a YAS search XDG desktop, and you can see there is an XDG desktop portal WLR we don't have. We do have this one. I feel like we would need WLR. We also have the XDG desktop portal Hyperland. Oh, I guess we could just install them all. <laughs> just install everything. Uh, but I don't think we need any of that. I, honestly, we have XDG desktop portal and XDG desktop portal Hyperland installed. I feel like that's sufficient. Uh, this is not doing anything though. And I feel like we need to fix that script and reference it properly. Uh, the other thing, when we look, let's just look at the config from DWM because I think I was grabbing some other stuff here and I can't remember oh, I was using sway BG. We do have way bar. What was the hotkeys blur shadow? I, this is somebody else's config. I was using a long time ago. Probably should do a whole new one. Thorium browser. Uh-huh. A super P for log out home Titus W11 super L uh, that actually probably should be doing for super L actually I was I think I was doing super W for this but looking glass client full screen and I want to use super W for that we could do ooh, ooh is kind of crazy like trying to change something in ooh is like crazy it's just nuts that's the problem nwg bar I, I don't know the nwg bar is not terrible i don't think just not actively developed that much we need to get grim blast that's another one that we need super e super x i think it hasn't really changed much hyper picker is fine w log out rofi does that work yeah rofi works all right window management. Let's look at some way bar tweaking. I like almost everything else in here. Just need to fix a few things. So Grim Blast, I believe we need to grab. Yeah. Now, oop, you know what? Let's do a search for Grim Blast. Okay, it's just that. Right, we're fine. Raz, thanks for the prime. Grim Blast. That's just for screenshots. That's not a big deal. I was just doing it before I forgot about it. And we have that hyper picker. Now, before we do this, just to make sure there's like not a hyper picker bin. Yeah, there isn't. 
that's the one we want. It's just I really hate using the AUR. I think we're only using it like for Thorium and GitHub Desktop right now. So we're not really heavily utilizing the AUR. As soon as you get like over 10 AUR packages, I feel like it's just destiny. Your system's going to break. <laughs> Look for ML4W git for Hyperland. Okay. What was the reload command? Let's take a look at that. So we're just going to go to hotkeys, keybinds. Okay. What is super F1? So keybinds. Oh, that's cool. Is that new? I didn't know that was there. So we have all our keybinds right at our fingertips. So you could eat. Oops. So if you're here. Oh, neat. So window management, super Q, super shift Q's exit. Let's go super shift Q real fast. So we go super shift Q should kick us back to our display manager. Yeah, let's relaunch. At least we should have a way bar now that hopefully won't crash. <laughs> and we should have that. Perfect. Okay. So here's Waybar, and if we go to Workspace 2, the one thing I don't like, eh, that's not terrible, I guess. Let's look at for some Waybar way rices. Waybar Hyperland Rice. All right, we got a couple links in chat from Phoenix. Let's take a look at that. <clears throat> I don't know, I like Hyperland a lot. It just always feels good. It looks sexy as hell, I'll give it that. You just... Man, that looks cool. Look at that. That's one sexy beast of a desktop, I gotta say. All right, let's do it. What do we got here? Let's see how well the document... One problem about Linux Rices is you see something like, I want that desktop. Recreating some of these Rices, it depends on who coded them. A lot of times, they don't do the greatest job with the actual installation. So let's see. Let's. This one looks like it's pretty well documented. So that's a good thing. Arch Linux recommended. Yep, yep, yep. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Before you start, back up your existing .config folder with your dot .files. What are you doing with my .config folder? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know if I trust it. Sounds like it's going to move my .config folder. That I'm going to be out on. Let's just, let's just salvage it. Well, he's using Alacrity. Duns, GTK, Hyper, Login. Before we get too crazy, before we get too wild, well, let's do a backup. <laughs> just, just because, uh, yeah, I really don't want to reinstall all this. I have worked for a very long time to get the, all this exactly how I like it. So let's, let's install some time shift action and do a backup. I know, blasphemy. Titus, you never do backups. Well, after you work for a couple weeks on it, you'll you'll do a backup uh time shift you have time shift time shift yes oh that's right uh problem with time shift launches pull kit's not in our pull kit is probably referencing like gnome or some crap from a year ago <clears throat> what am i using i think i'm using lx pull kit now no mate mate pull kit shift it okay I got it. I got it. Uh, let's grab <laughs> what any mighty mo. What do we want to grab? What if uh, that's a lot to do? I kind of want to see the GUI. All right, just give me. Okay, G parted. Cannot open display column. All right, fine. Damn it. What did I use? We were using Mate right here. Yank that. Um, and we're going to grab 10. Oh, man. I probably shouldn't be doing all this when I'm having not the best day. I don't know. I think it's sometimes entertaining. You guys get to see me completely break stuff over my knee on these days where I'm kind of like not feeling it. And then other days you load it up and then everything works great and I don't break anything. This is not one of those days. 
<laughs> this is a I'm breaking everything today. Uh, so yeah, let's go with execute once equals. Uh, what is happening? Yeah, let's just do that. WL sunset. What the heck? No, get rid of that. And this isn't even doing anything anymore. I really got to fix my XDG portal hyperlink. It probably does it automatically now. In this way, background, we need to get uh, hyper hyper paper up and going. I really wanted to try that project too. Okay. So, <laughs> why does Chris do more more difficult things on the more difficult days instead of just working on Windows stuff? It's true. I probably should do that on the Windows stuff today, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just fun. It's just fun sometimes. All right, we got that going. I do feel like this will work now. Time shift. Um, time shift. Yeah, look at that. Pull kit. All right. Well, maybe. Well, all right. What if we do G parted? G parted. Shoot. I think it's something with the XDG desktop portal. Uh, let's pull up the, the actual documentation. Uh, let's just do a restore. Hyperland documentation. Let's just go to configuring. Comments, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. Everything's there. Yeah, that's fine. What about installation? Was there anything crazy here? No. This is just building the binary. That's fine. Variables. Sensitivity. All this. Good jazz. Ah. Eh. Monitor binds. Workspace rules. What's workspace rules? Yes. That's what I wanted. All right. All right. Here's here's what we need. <laughs> So uh, we started out the stream, Peter, with DWM blocks. We got DWM blocks going uh, relatively quickly. I think the clicking in DWM blocks was aggravating. I couldn't quite get that going. For some odd reason, it just wasn't referencing my clicks. So it was something with DWM and DWM blocks working like in tandem. Uh, but overall, it worked just fine. It's just, it was like, okay, let's, let's try out Hyperland. Uh, so it worked and then installing the modules was pretty decent. We, we ended up using Luke Smith's, uh, DWM block scripts, which was pretty, pretty solid. And we able to change everything that we did. And then we still have DWM. We can usually sw swap back over to it. It's just, I was like, I don't really feel like troubleshooting DWMs, uh, clicking on the status bar to make things happen for some odd reason. That's just not working. And I was like, ah, I don't want to deal with that right now. So then I was like, let's install Hyperland. <laughs> Try it out. But uh, as we see, Hyperland has its own set of problems here. Okay, so the XDG Desktop Portal, a program that lets other applications communicate swiftly the compositor through DBus. This is used for opening file pickers, screen sharing. On Wayland, it requires an implementation. For Hyperland, it uses XDG Portal WLR. I don't think we have this package, actually. Due to various reasons, WLR Portal is inferior. Okay. In order to bridge the gap, Hyperland has its own fork called Hyperland. We actually already use that, so we don't need that one. So we install that. Usage should start automatically. The basic way of telling everyone is okay to start screen sharing and it doesn't, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for the nuclear option, you can use this group and execute it once. The thing is, user lib, I don't think had that, did it? LS user lib. Oh, no, it did. So this is the updated script. And if we look at my Hyperland iteration. Oh, geez. All right. Let's go config. Man, what a, what a pain. Okay. Now, I got rid of that. I think we will go with the nuclear option. We're just going to grab that. And then we're going to paste that. Good. And... I think we can just save that. Um, write, what do we call this? Hyper portal. And wow, geez, did that, did it put it in my home directory? No, no, no. It did it in config, didn't it? 
Oh yeah, hyper portals there. Good enough. I know, I'm just kind of hacking this together, but I'm like, just want to get a good backup going. So I don't want to lose, like I always can fall back to DWM and I don't want to lose any of my progress. So what we're going to do now, bam. We like nuclear here. I feel like that's always a good thing. I think this worked actually. You notice my mouse cursor? I think that changed as well. Yeah. G parted. That's not working though. Why? Cannot open display colon one. I think I have a configuration issue. Let's look at hyperland comp. There's probably something under monitor. Preferred auto one. That seems okay. Let's look at a WLRX Randar or a Randar. So if we look, we've got this janky Amazon cheapo monitor here. <clears throat> uh, HDMI A-1. We are running it at 60 Hertz at 1080p. And that's it. That is all it's doing. So why can't it open display? Oh, software programmer myself. I'm just wondering working with C++ or C Sharp. Mostly, how you guys handle creating instance of class, there's no such thing as OOP programming in C. So it's mostly copy and paste works. I'm not a professional programmer. I I, I, I would not do anything I do. <laughs> Just in general practice. Most of my stuff is ancient. Anything I know is super duper old. So... I would, I would follow some of the new new kids on the block kind of thing on that, refer to them. A lot of times what I do is old and wrong. <laughs> but I, if it gets the job done, I'm like, ah, screw it. It got us there. And honestly, it, for me, when it comes to programming, I think the one thing I can think of, I give you actually a good answer, is if I can make my code readable by everybody else, that's always a good, that's such a, like a superpower, no matter what language you're in. That is just something that is always appreciated. It, sometimes getting something to work is pretty easy, but getting something more universal that everyone can read is, is a very difficult thing to do. And that's something that I, I wish more programmers focused on getting your code to a state where everyone can read it. A newbie, an experienced person, everybody just looks at it and understands what's going on. And I think that's, it can be done in almost any language in any program. It's just depends on the skill of the programmer. And I think that is one skill that many people miss out on. I remember QBasic, man. You remember uh, nibbles.bass, gorilla.bass, the first snake, man. Uh, actually, one of my first C++ programs I ever did was modifying or basically taking and porting gorilla.bass over into C++. It was uh, in the 90s I did that. So, long, long time ago. <laughs> There's often an inverse relation between programming skills and a talent for communication. Yeah, very true. <laughs> I mean, as long as I make money, I'm coding in Latin. <laughs> Fair. Oh, God, you guys are hilarious. All right. I, for me, though, uh, these days, I... I I just like to have fun. If I can have fun coding something, I do it. I, I love that. I, I think if you can have fun doing any kind of coding project, no matter the language, no matter what you're doing, uh, that that that's pretty awesome. Now, you guys see nothing. It just didn't work. Okay, well, it works over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just like, yeah, I just kind of need this to work. Let's uh, let's just do this. Uh, where do I want to put my backups? Eh, we'll put it here. New. Let's enable this one backup. Mm -mm -mm. Format to ext4. Why do we have this reserve partition? It's kind of weird. Ah, eh, we'll leave it. <laughs> yeah, I think the big thing here is whenever I run into problems, I'm just like. Mm. Hello, old friend. Come back here, DWM. I didn't mean what I said earlier about DWM blocks and the clicking. I love you. You just work. So nice. <laughs> After messing around with that, I was like, that's eh, cool. 
Waybar. Still don't like you, Waybar. I do need to make you look pretty, and I do like the sexiness of Hyperland. And I should spend more time with the configuration and updating my configuration. But inevitably, I still hate Wayland. It's a problem. It's a problem. I need to get over it. I'm sorry for everybody writing in chat, yelling at me. But, I, man, I just don't like Wayland. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I know I should I should join the cool kids club and go, hey, this new Wayland is just way better than than Xorg and get with the times. But I mean, there's something to be said for just loading your stuff up and having it work. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good one, damn it. DWM is the chill guy in the corner doing his thing. Hyperland is the dude blasting fireworks with both hands with lights around his neck, center of attention. It's true. It's true. One looks way better than the other, for sure. But that chill dude just doing his stuff with his head down, you gotta appreciate the work product that comes out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Then I need the speed. Yeah, you, it's hard to beat this. It really is. But having said that, before we get too far in the weeds with any other kind of system configuration, uh, I feel like we dodged some bullets. We were like Neo from the Matrix earlier with that just shenanigans with the yay SYU. That was just straight up stupid on my part. I don't know what I was thinking. Like, let's just jeopardize all that time I spent over the last couple of weeks building this system and not have a proper backup. Yeah, nope. We're uh, we're gonna get that done right now. All right, snapshot location is gonna be right here. Yes, three terabytes. Next, we're gonna go daily. Now you could go grandfather, uh, father, son. So like a typical business would go something like uh, probably it depends on how far back you want to just like a quarter you would do a monthly a weekly and a daily and then that would be good i change my stuff so often i think daily's fine an hour uh on boot as well yeah that's fine um root include all files and for home titus let's just include all files too all right, snapshots are enabled, blah, 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 finish. So now we have that. Let's just create our first snapshot. Just grab it all. Did you miss DWM from day one? Yeah, Peter, I think there's a lot of that going on too. Like there's, there's things where when it comes down to it, like Hyperland, I truly do think is going to be massive in the future. Like I think a lot of Linux users are going to end up on Hyperland and there's going to be some really cool setup scripts. It still has some uh, maturity to go through, but it's, it's getting there. I do think a lot of people will be using it from a Wayland standpoint. Damn. I don't think there's anything better on Wayland than Hyperland. I, nothing else even gets me ro remotely excited except for Hyperland. So I love that, but um, when we look at things and just <laughs> the the different things we have to look at with, with all of this going on is there's still a lot of programs that haven't caught up, a lot of different knowledge that hasn't quite made it down. It, it's maturing so quick now that I feel like a lot of the problems I have is just, okay, I need to just load up a new system, pull it up, install it, and then just do that like 10 times with Hyperland, with Wayland, with all the new stuff, and then just kind of mess around with it a, a bit and learn more. Because I don't want another situation where I go three or four years, like DWM is a perfect example of that, where I absolutely love DWM. And I went three or four years just because it was in intimidating and I didn't know it. And there's something about that where I was like, I don't know this and I'll get to it later. And DWM was definitely in that camp. And I wish I, I wish I gave it a little bit more fair shake. If I would have just spent 30 minutes to an hour on a DWM four years ago, 
man, I, I mean, I don't know where I'd be today. Where my DWM would be today. It'd be amazing. I know. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people do it. And I appreciate it. Like, I don't ever, I don't ever get mad at someone for telling me, ah, hey, you need to try this or that. Uh, I think it's, it's cool to, to go through it all. Um, I just did my whole home folder, which includes all my steam games. So this might take a minute. I think we will just go on to another workspace and just let this kind of churn out in the background while I think about DWM blocks here. But yeah, that, that's just my thought on that. Um, hmm. <laughs> glazed WM. Maybe Thursday we'll do some, some Windows glazed WM. I'm not feeling Windows today, Phoenix. So where we're at on DWM blocks, if we go into... So our DWM blocks looks like this right now. Pretty solid. Not bad. Um, now let's change our header file. Oops. Ah, huh. what did I, did I mess up this? Ah, it's config.h. SP tasks I didn't even have. Yeah, there we go. I do need to make like an auto command for my Vim so it'll just fire off and do that automatically every time I change it. Could not connect to Pipewire. Was that, did I, did I mess something up with Pipewire? It's a good question. Hmm. No, you're not fooling me, Phoenix. You probably logged in as uh, Lyco late. It's just Phoenix number two. I know the truth. <laughs> but yeah, no, I will check out Glaze WM. Oh, let's see here. <laughs> Is it normal for Hyperland to be super laggy on QEMU? It shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. I did run into something other time. Good good times. I heard someone say QMU is super laggy. And a lot of times that deals with them not using like Bert IO for your keyboard and mouse. A lot of people just leave the keyboard and mouse as PS2. Just to show you what that looks like. So let's open up our Windows instance. Hmm. Surprised this isn't running, but um, probably something I did earlier. If you look at here, you see I have two different keyboards and mouse. So a lot of people just have this and it's just relative mu mu movement. Go ahead and add the mouse and keyboard as vert IO. And as long as you have your balloon driver installed from which you should, you know, obviously you should have something so you can register everything uh in register performance and it, it just you'll, you'll communicate so much better with your linux instance with uh the qmu tools and with the qmu tools you should be able to do vert io for both keyboard and mouse if you're using like an internal display like obviously i'm using pci pastor for my display with looking glass so it doesn't appeal to me but uh if it does i would switch your your video driver also i have it on none but you would set this to vert IO as well. You're gonna notice some good pickup and performance in both both realms on that. So that's what usually a lot of latency and lag comes from. Graphics card could make Hyperland laggy because of fancy animation. It, it also could be a Wayland issue too. Wayland's still very new a lot of times for a lot of implementations. And most things are built with Xorg in mind and not Wayland in mind. So it could be an issue with some kind of compositing or rendering there. Yeah, I think the big thing for me um, with with actually summarizing and making more information dense is a lot of PCI pass-through type situations is just extremely hardware dependent. And I can't just lay out steps that are universally accepted. I think probably the best how-to guide, if you want to do PCI pass-through yourself, Hikari Knight did a fantastic job with his VFIO docs. If you want to learn like the nuts and bolts and line by line, step by step, I think that's the document you really should be focusing on. Vert.io is good. Vert.gl is better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Which isn't normally compiled in QEMU. Quick EMU has it on Proxmox too. I think dubs when we did uh, Proxmox, we used those user scripts. This is uh, coming up on a new video that I'm doing on Proxmox actually. Uh, let's just do that. Well, where did I put it? This is going to take forever to do all these. But anyways, it was Proxmox scripts, I think, is what I was doing. Proxmox. 
user scripts. Somebody showed this to me and I just fell in love. Like I used to be like, eh, it's okay uh, when it came to Proxmox, but then I found these user scripts and geez, where is it? I said this guy website. I think it was this. Yeah. So I think all these user scripts is what I ended up using from it. I think it was this, this one, but like, let's see, monitor all host backup post install. It corrects the, yeah, I think this was what I was doing. I'll put it in chat for you guys. Very, very cool. Yeah, that right there I need to do a video on because Proxmox just, oh, end all be all for that. What do we got? Rice in four dots. Let's see what we got. See, that's, see, this is what always draws me back to Hyperland. It looks so cool. God bless. Look at that. It's just so darn sexy. How's Gemini, by the way? I don't think I really messed with it. Last time I tried, I think it was Google Bard. Oh, it was awful. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's clean. That's why I'm like, ah, I can totally see obligatory anime character coming up. Here we go. <laughs> every single Linux rice is like a, it's a thing. Every every single one has an anime character in it. It's hilarious to me. Would you still recommend XEP if you're trying to replicate enterprise? Yeah, still still XEP energy, like. XCP is just so good in the enterprise realm. And if you're doing headless implementations, just running a bunch of services, I, I still say XMP. If you don't want to use like VMware, use XCP. XCP NG is amazing for that. But for doing like YouTube stuff or, or graphical stuff, and you're going to be using the machine and the graphics in the machine, Proxmox all day long, man. Like Ver, VirGL and uh, what someone talked about earlier, you just can't beat VirGL. It is so darn good. Uh, the ML4W has multiple wave bar and easy to modify and add more. Yeah, I need to do that. That's cool though. Yeah, it's just the a lot of the, ooh, what is that? Windows. Huh, I wonder why you put that on there. Maybe it was a other one, okay. Neat, neat. Yeah, there's a lot of cool implementations uh, for the Hyperland dots. A lot of people have been working on it, like I said. I'm interested to see a lot of that, but yeah, still probably will be doing more, more in the realm of just kind of hanging out and uh, doing DWM still. I think DWM is still where I'm at, and, but I'm going to keep Hyperland loaded and keep jumping back to it. It's still fun to mess with. Oh, that was Linux. Oh, wow, Dammy. Well, that was an impressive implementation. I, you fooled me at first look. Uh, some people are just comfortable with the look of Windows. And uh, a lot of people don't want to change from that. I can get it. I understand it. I would never do it. But I'm not going to bash someone for, for doing it. Whoever spent the time to rice that is... It's got some skills, that's for sure. Looked very, very, very close to it. What else do we got here? distro window manager and desktop independent okay oh that's cool wow yeah some of the linux rising community is just blows my mind i love it oh well the boot time most of the blame is going to be qmu uh i'm utilizing like 400 watts i want to say so well, we can do system D blame real fast. If anybody has done system D uh, blame before, you'll you'll know what's up. I'm gonna just keep the, keep that running in the background. Get a full backup. Uh, system D. I think you can do analyze blame. Yeah. So we got network weight and network manager. That's. 45 seconds is what network wait online service is waiting for. So that's what's causing most of the slow startup. It's all just network manager. 45 seconds waiting on network manager. Hmm. Was that a service I put in? Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. I tried Plasma 6. That was actually the first one I did before I switched back to DWM. It is, uh, Plasma 6 was a bit of a train wreck. I mean, it worked. But it was very buggy. 
lots of flickering and we we ran into a, a variety of different bugs with plasma six and i was just like all right well i kind of need my system to work and i need you guys to see what i'm doing so uh, i kicked it to the curb fairly quick oh my post is crazy long so anytime you do like a, a, a xeon processor with uh, a server it's, it's basically a server board and whenever you have these server boards they have these ridiculously long checks before they'll boot up so you're going to waste about a minute during the power on process i don't even shut off my system anymore i just put it in suspend mode just because i hate how long it takes to post which you know it's a trade-off when you go with the server board they're a little bit more durable for sure but yeah you're not going to get any fast boot times with a server board but yeah, network manager weight is what what's causing all that from system D blame. Oh no. What else do we have? <laughs> oh no. That is brilliant. Your PC is fine. Choose your option. Oh. That's hilarious. Love it. Yeah, I mean this is it's it's stupid. Like when I when we were doing the compile earlier, we were just basically compile all of Chromium. Um, and, and even when I was still like start a, a game on this system, we'll ramp up to about 800 watts on this system, which is kind of kind of insane. But a lot of that is uh, is like we're running all everything over here, but we also have wow, what's going on here? Hmm. Oh, oops. Uh, actually, no, I need virtual machine manager. Let's go ahead and start this up. Ah, we are running into a problem here. One second, I think I was passing through something. I shouldn't have start this guy up, but let's see. Right now we're, we're sucking down. This also includes my production PC, but right now we're sucking down 674 watts. And... I should did I not click start on that? I thought I did. Okay, it's already running. There it goes. Just took a little bit. So now we got that running, and now we can launch into Looking Glass. Maybe, maybe not. Starting it up. So we're good. 680. But what's going on with the Looking Glass? Let's just PS ox it. Okay, we do have Looking Glass client up. So. Uh, da, da, da. there we go and it should just be that grab um well crap all right kill that let's try to launch it again i broke my whole system figures probably going in and out of hyperland if i go looking glass clients ah it's pulse audio yeah something with pulse with uh hyperland screwed me up um, if we didn't want to reboot because we're doing all those copies for the backup over in, uh, workspace one, which that'll take a century to finish. I'll probably just leave it overnight. Um, what, what else can we do here? We could do, I want to say there's a system CTL user status pulse audio dude i can't even remember let's, let's see there's a way to restart pulse audio without rebooting uh restart pulse audio is pipe wire pulse I, I can't remember audio pipe wire ah that fingered it looks like i already clicked on this one ah here we go system ctl user so i did i need to switch out my uh my uh switch over here i i've been meaning to do it i haven't got there quite yet i will though i will so let's restart it and then let's do a system ctl user status pipe wire pulse it's enabled it's running we have the socket that's fine and if we go pavu control what do we have i think we nuked pulse audio was there something in that script that screwed me up I think there probably was when we installed hyperland audio um so we have pipe wire 
removing all of pipe wire and the dot config. Oh no, it's copying all the pipe wire. Hmm. Is there anything else in here? Yeah, I think we screwed something up with that. And if we go into pipe wire, I don't know what all this is, but hmm. Uh, have I ever tried just ZI? Oh, I don't have a FZF. Uh, let's go SFZF. Is there no official package for FCF? Oh no, FCF's up here. Yeah, I'll just say there should be an official package. Oh, okay. Oh, I got you. So then you can easily just go back to your your last, your most used ones. That's cool. I like it. Okay, ZI. It's a good, good hit up. Alias CD to FD type directory FZF, and then just look for the directory you go to. Text. It's gonna have a gajillion, isn't it? I hate it when they have really generic. Eh, I don't see anything here. Nothing that cool. All right. Oh, in uh, ZI, I got gotcha. you. Well, I'll let this go. I'll finish this backup. Um, I did something. Let's reset pipe wire real fast. Reset pipe wire config. So wire plumber's not used anymore. It should all be media or no, maybe it is. Okay, yeah, no, it uses wire plumber. Let's just see when we look at, yeah, wire plumber should be installed and it is. Yeah, nobody uses media session anymore. And if you go to home.local state wire plumber, this is where everything is, but it's, uh, I think honestly, I just need a reboot. And then there's dot config pulse, uh, dot big. And so we have pulse audio and pipe wire. I don't see any, I don't know. We do have pulse. Let's just dump pulse audio, all of pipe wire, and then give it a restart, uh, of the service. It should repopulate all those. And then we should have like control of control of everything again. And if we go up, let's get status active and running. Okay. Pavu control and we're back in business. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, good to know. So if you guys do run into that problem, instead of rebooting, you can just wipe out your dot config pulse and pipe wire folders and then restart the user service pipe wire dash pulse. And now if we run into launch that looking glass, everything's right with the world. Yay. Okay. Well, sweet. That's a, that's a good little like exercise of having everything up on your system. And then when something breaks, uh, it's kind of nice having like that copy going in the background because it's so easy just to kind of wipe out stuff and be like, I don't know what service it is. I'm just going to restart. And instead it forces us to find that service, restart it manually and clear it out without doing a full reboot, which is nice because it's not windows. You don't have to reboot, which is cool. If you're running Arch, QME full is what we use to have vert GL. Yeah, I use QME full as well. I highly recommend doing QME dash full because you do um, specifically emulating Windows 11, you're gonna need the TPM. So you could do pass through or emulated TPM. And if you don't have the QMU dash full, it emits those, uh, those packages. So you'd have to manually go track them down. There's also like vert, uh, vert IO has a bunch of packages that get, get, uh, left out when you don't do QMU dash full. I always just do QMU dash full. It probably installs more packages than I need, but there's a lot of packages, uh, that we need. Chris really loves Windows. Windows, yeah, you know, how do you not? How do you not? You know, Windows has always been there. It's like uh, I may not like being in it 100% of the time, but Windows has its own place in my heart for sure. I go through phases too. Like, there's some phases where I'm just like in Windows a bunch, and then there's some phases where I'm in Linux a bunch. It's almost like seasons of the year, like going from fall to to spring. Sometimes I'm in Linux a lot more. Sometimes in Windows. It, it really feels just, I kind of, sometimes I feel good, sometimes I don't. And then I'm like, ah, I'm just going to go to the other OS. Nothing wrong with that. You need full for X, uh, XQL and Spice. That's right, lucky man. That's exactly why I installed full. I was trying to do Spice 
and passing through um of specifically for the the graphics driver i think it's actually not xql it's a uh, qxl phoenix you can remind me on thursday we'll react to glaze wm i'm gonna shut it down for today it has been a, a fun day for sure I probably will do some DWM blocks some more and uh, work on kind of some of the the clickability of DWM blocks I'm not sure on. I've got it pretty much to the point where I'm like, okay, it works, but it doesn't really look all that sexy. But it works. And that's the thing I like the most, is it does work really, really well. <laughs> yeah, my professional life's 95% Windows, my personal life's 95% Linux. I'm kind of all over the place, man. It depends. Like I said, it depends on the season for me. Sometimes I'm in Windows a bunch. If I'm working on like the toolbox a bunch, I'm usually in Windows quite often. But this new system I kind of love because when I do need to work in Windows, I'm still in Linux. So I don't know. I don't know what the percentage is there because we could just be here and then I could be like, ah, let me pull up Windows and just be over here. And then I'll be like, ah, Linux, Windows, Linux, Windows. Linux windows it's just so darn fast that I can do all the stuff I need to do and uh, not really sacrifice anything which is is awesome what do you do for work windows what do you do for fun Linux I can see that like I think that's a, a really good a really good balance because I do say like when it comes to working on an operating system I definitely have the most fun in Linux in that regard uh, sometimes in Windows, there, there's obviously the gaming aspect. I find like if I'm just wanting to have a good time and play a bunch of different games, Windows is definitely superior in that regard. It's just everything's made for it. So it just works pretty easy. So most gamers still Windows the choice, but I love the tinkering in Linux. You just can't beat that. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to shut up down for the day. Thanks all for coming out, joining me on this uh, wonderful excursion of me destroying my system almost. And then uh, I think I'm going to just let this go in the background. I have three terabytes just sitting there. I'm doing a full one to one replication using rsync. And we're just going to back up this entire system, home folder, root folder, everything right over into this uh, rated. I think these are two three terabyte spinning platters, so it'll take a long time to probably sync all the files, but I, I would just prefer have a full copy of my backups locally on this system. Eh, it'll be good. So uh, Thursday, we'll work on some Glaze WM in Windows. We'll do some Windows action. I do kind of want to, I think on Thursday, we'll actually touch, maybe get started on some C Sharp again. I really kind of wanted to look at some of the gooey elements of c sharp and maybe approach that we'll see how i'm feeling we'll see what i'm feeling on on thursday we'll bounce around a little bit you know always fun yeah i need to try kde out as well i, I need to load up some vms so if we do want to do an install i'm for installing another distro just not on this system i'll probably just spin up a vm because we have all these cores, we could spin up 10 VMs. It doesn't matter. So if there is something and we want to try it out, uh, like I think Bazite, I, I wanted to really try out too. So that's a possibility as well. We could spin up a VM with Bazite, throw it on there, try it out, see how it goes. And uh, yeah, it'd be fun. So, all right, guys, peace. Have a great one.